A key forestry skill, if you're doing forestry in BC, is doing a site assessment or site diagnosis using the Beck system. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, I've got my data sheet, and we can fill that out together. So get out your site assessment form. The first entry there says block identification. Uh, so if you were doing a formal survey, you would probably have a very specific name for the site that you're doing. Since we don't have that, I'm just gonna give this an appropriate name. We're, I'm gonna call this UBC Farm Agroforestry Trail, because that's, that's where we are, all right? And then the first thing we're gonna do is our environmental analysis. So we're going to look at, at the context of the site and then look at the soil, and we'll use that to determine our soil moisture regime and our soil nutrient regime. So let's just go down the sheet here. The first uh, spot for us to fill out is elevation. And I just looked up the elevation here. We're at about 75 meters above sea level. So 75 meters for elevation. The next is slope gradient. So I look at, as I look around here, I'm seeing a little bit of rolling terrain. I mean, just very small at kind of the, the micro scale, but I don't see a consistent gradient here. Things are pretty flat here. So I'm gonna put 0% for slope gradient. But let's just imagine for a minute that we were on a slope that we could view a slope. So the way I would do that, if I had a friend with me, if I was doing this with somebody else, I would first stand next to them and figure out where my eyes line up on them. So I'm doing this by myself today. So I'm gonna consider that tree to be my friend. And then uh, you would have your friend stand either uphill or downhill from you, either is fine, but you want them to be standing in the direction of the slope. So let's just for argument's sake, say that that tree behind me, or actually I'll stand to the side of the tree so you can see. I'm gonna go over to the tree and figure out that my eye level, let's see, my eye level is right about here. Maybe just to make this a little bit easier for me, I'm gonna put a little piece of flag in there. All right, so that way I know that, I know at which point on the tree I should measure. And we're on a flat site, but for argument's sake, let's say that this would be the downhill side of our site and standing in kind of a spot that seems to, to represent the, the gradient that we see. So I would next get out my clinometer there we go. I'm gonna look through my clinometer. I'm gonna line it up with that spot on that tree or the spot on my friend that I know is at about my eye level. And here I suspect that there's a little bit of a slope just because I'm standing in a tiny little depression, but let's see. So I'm gonna line up my clinometer with that and read it. And I'm getting plus one, so 1% 1 slope with the uphill side being that direction. But like I said, I'm just in a little divot. If I stood back here, it would probably be 1% downhill. So there really isn't a slope here. I just wanted to show you how we would go about measuring that. So slope gradient is 0%. And then the next is aspect, and it's asking for an azimuth there. So when we think about describing the surface of an area, we often give slope and aspect. Slope is the steepness of the land, and aspect is what direction that's facing. And this can be kind of confusing for students sometimes because if we're standing on a mountain where, if we're looking down the mountain, it's to the south and we're looking up the mountain, it's to the north, what's the aspect of that mountain? Is it north or south? Or the aspect of that, uh, that slope of that mountain? And it can be kind of hard to remember which way to go. So the trick that I think of is I just imagine taking a big bucket of water and dumping it on the ground and watching which way that water flows. And that direction is the aspect. So we're on a, a flat surface here, so there really is no aspect. But let's just imagine for a moment that we're on a steep slope. I imagine dumping that, dumping that water on the ground and it flowing that direction. So I say, okay, downhill is that direction. That's the direction water flows. So I'm gonna get my compass out, open it up. I'm gonna use tilt the sighting mirror so that I can see the compass housing in the mirror. I'm gonna point it in the direction of the aspect, and now I'm going to turn my compass housing until the red shed lines up with the needle. Okay, now I'm going to read 
the azimuth from the compass housing. And here it looks like we're at about 290, about 295 degrees. So if this was the, the, uh, the aspect, I would call it 295 degrees. In this case, there is no aspect because we're not really on a slope. So on the data sheet, I'm just gonna draw a dash where aspect goes, saying that there, there is no relevant aspect here. Slope position. Slope position is important, especially when we're keying out soil moisture regimes and soil nutrient regimes that comes into play, because where we are on, if we're on a slope, our position on that slope is going to determine whether we're at a water receiving site or a water shedding site, and over the past hundreds of years has, um, have uh, fine soil particles like clay and organic matter, have they washed away from our site? Have they been carried by water to other locations? Or are we in a spot that's been receiving those deposits? So that's going to affect our soil quite a bit. And in your field guide, you have a, a, a diagram showing different slope positions. In this particular packet, mesoslope position is on page 47. So if you look at this, uh, there's actually, there's a diagram there. So crest, upper, middle, lower slope, toe slope. Uh, you can also have a uh, level or depression. Those are all different categories there. And in the text there, it describes the differences. So in this case, if you look at that, we're just going to be in a level slope. It says any level, any level mesoscale area not immediately adjacent to a mesoscale slope. So what that's saying is it's relatively level here, but we're not adjacent to a uh, another slope. So it's not like this is a level spot that's just down slope from a very steep spot. It's quite level all around here. So I don't imagine there's going to be any influence of the mesoscale or the mesoslope position on this site. So on our data sheet, for slope position, we're going to mark flat. The next question is slope shape. So this can be a little bit confusing to students sometimes. Uh, because your slope shape is independent of your slope. So you can have a very steep slope or a very flat slope, but you can have different shapes among those. So really, you're just kind of going to look around in the local area and compare these. So a convex slope shape means that the ground is kind of higher in the middle and lower on the sides. So a little bit hump shaped. So I, in this case, I don't see that. Uh, and the impact of that, you can imagine if you have a convex shape is that water is going to shed from that location. So it's probably going to be a little bit drier. On the other end of the spectrum is concave. So kind of a depression shaped area. And you imagine in that case, uh, water is going to gather and collect there. So that's why that would impact that site. So here we've got a little bit of micro topography. There's some tiny little ridges and tiny little depressions, but on the whole, looking at this whole area, I don't see it being either convex or concave. I think our slope shape is simply straight. Microtopography. Um, I'd have to look up in the guide how these are, are specifically identified. So we're definitely not in strongly mounded topography. Um, probably not moderately mounded. For this, there is a little bit of rolling area. So for example, this spot here is a little bit low. And this spot here is kind of high. So there's a little bit of variation. There's a little bit of mounding. And I think this probably goes back to uh, some tip ups, some wind throw disturbances that have happened in the past. You see that Douglas fir behind me is growing on kind of a high spot and there's a low spot here. So I imagine at some point long ago, hundreds of years ago, there was a tree growing here that blew down and deposited the soil there. So there's a few of these around here. I'm gonna call this where do we go here? I'm gonna call this slightly mounded. It's probably somewhere in the range of slightly mounded or smooth. All right, and then exposure. Is there anything else kind of unusual about this site? Um, are we getting an especially large amount of sun here, insulation? Are we in a frost pocket? A frost pocket is when we're in kind of a, a slightly lower area, uh, kind of a little bit of a depression where cool air might pool and we might be more likely to get frost than we would in the surrounding areas. So that's not true. We're not in a cold air drainage. A cold air drainage is when you're 
maybe in a little bit of a valley where cold air is going to flow by. It might not necessarily stop there though, so it might not be a frost pocket. We're not especially exposed to wind here. We're not especially exposed to salt spray. We're not, we're, we're near the coast, but not that close. Um, and we're not gonna be especially exposed to snow here. So no, no unusual exposure for this site. So that's the first step, this, the physiographic features. 